Dwight, uh, UFC fight number five, man. Um, how do you feel about how the run's gone so far? I know it's kind of split results, but uh, you know, where do you think you kind of stand right now? Uh, it's it's a little strange. Every fight I've had has been some kind of like a like weird thing, right? you know. Like I've had great uh, finishes, but then I've had like you know like a controversial like uh, wins too and losses. So I'm I'm ready to just go put stamps on every fight. Like I, I think I said it before, I'm fighting for the finish now. I'm not fighting just to knock people out and knock them down. I'm not fighting to knock them completely out and finish the fight. So I think I'm trying to make more statements like that going forward. Uh, what's kind of the change in mindset? Like, did something happen? Was it just the result of the last fight that made that click for you? Yeah, it was the result of the last fight, man. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm trying to, like, stay composed, you know what I mean? But uh, it, it really uh, opened up a lot of things uh, in my mind. But I realized that I'm trying to go through this rule thing of keeping this a competition, you know? Like, okay, this happens and that happens and I win, you know? But now I was like, no, this is a fight. I got to fight and make sure I win. And that's like, that's a whole shift. Like, everything changes now. So I think... I'll, is that's going to be reflected in this performance. Yeah? Do you think uh, Stefan's a, a good opponent to bring that out of you, or do you think it doesn't even matter you're going to do that against any opponent? I can't let it matter, because if I judge that, if I uh, allow the opponent to bring it out of me, then it's going to be spotty. You know, It has to be no matter what, no matter who, always going to be on. To on yeah? Do you think uh, you're going to get an extra boost on Saturday with the fans in there behind you? A hundred percent, because the fans, not only do they make uh, you know, <laughs> like a great atmosphere for the fight, but they let you know when you're doing things right. <laughs> you know, like you hit somebody a couple times, and you hear, oh, oh, you're like, okay, I'm doing something good. Let me keep doing this for a while. <laughs> you know, so like uh, that's gonna be a, a great help also. Awesome, thanks, man. All right, cool. Over oh, here, other side. Oh. Hey, how you doing? Uh, good. How you doing? Uh, pretty good. Uh, what do you make of Stefan's skill set? He obviously hasn't fought since his uh, USADA issues. Uh, have you had? Do you watch tape? And if you do, like anything about him impress you? Oh yeah, I watch a lot of tape. Uh, impressive. I, I like fighting guys like this uh, because. These are the kind of guys that I've been trained to fight like my whole career. Because I started out as a striker, and then you know people try to take me down all the time. So that's one thing. But what makes him extra special is that uh, his striking is kind of like a karate stylish. You know, it's kind of like it's not the standard of boxing. And these are the people that I excel at fighting the most because that's kind of like my background. You know, and it reminds me of sparring in the gym when I was like 16, 17. You know, like this kind of like weird uh, jumpy movements and stuff like that. That's me all day, so I'm very excited to, to, to compete in this one. What do you mean when you say you've been training for about for like a specific fighter like that, just his skill set or like wrestling wise? Uh, it's kind of like uh, somebody who strikes and then goes for a takedown. Okay. You know, it's, it's like that's been like the bane of, of the existence of many strikers throughout the years. You know, somebody who's not scared to strike with you, but then will take you down in the middle of a of a uh, you know. I was a confrontation <laughs> in the middle of an exchange, you know? Sure. So that's the kind of guy I've always been training for. So he's one of those guys. Were you aware of him before you got the fight offer? Uh, no, I didn't hear him before, but, you know, I watched a lot of tape on him. <laughs> um, and I don't want, not to harp on your last performance, but obviously that was your first knockout loss, too. Is, yeah. is getting past that, obviously, what's, the, what, what's it like mentally coming off of your first? Because you've lost before, but mm -hmm. that was obviously your first stoppage loss. So mentally, what's, what's the big difference? Uh, I mean... It's hard because uh, when I, I don't want to lose ever again, you know, <laughs> but what I do, I get really upset. So this particular one made me even more so because I felt, I don't know, I felt betrayed almost, you know, it was like like, like by myself, you know, it was like I, I felt like there was nothing I could do to, to bring it back. I felt as though, like, you know, I, I should have been allowed to continue. All these things in my mind, you know, like when I get beat up, you know, like, God forbid. But when I do, I, I don't care. I'm like, yeah, man, that guy beat me up, man. That's whatever. It's, it's just, that's just what happens, you know? But when there's a doubt in there, that's when you can't sleep at night when you're tossing and turning and well, what if this, what if that. That's when people come and tell you stories about, yeah, I was watching the fight and you should have did this, this, and this, and this. And they tell me all the things I should have did. And I can't say no because, uh, you know, I didn't win. <laughs> you know, so this, this particular uh, fight going back in, I'm very interested in, in seeing how I feel when I hear the sounds in the cage. It's one thing to spar and train, but another thing when you see the person cross and you hear the referee and you hear the footsteps in the, in the cage, that makes a whole different story. And I wanna see what my is gonna be, but no matter what I feel, I'm gonna perform. So that's, that's the most important thing. And uh, finally, who do you like in the main event between Usman and Masvidal? I'm going for Masvidal. Uh, but, uh, I really want to see him win because he's been fighting for a long time. And I love to see a guy who's been fighting so long, you know, uh, get a championship and put that exclamation point in his career. Not being just a contender, but be a champion as well. You know, so I'm really looking forward to seeing him win. Cool. Oh, yeah, how you doing? <laughs>
So uh, you talk about watching a lot of tape. Some fighters, they ha they're split on that. Some mm. watch a lot. Some say they leave it to the coaches. Mm. Not specifically just Stefan, but when you're watching tape, what kind of tendencies are you looking for in opponents? Oh, I mean, uh, it's nothing fancy. It's just like uh, I can knock the person out here, 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 and here. You know, that's how I look at it. Because, I, I mean, my fight is pretty straightforward. You know, like I'm trying to knock the person out all the time. That's like uh, just what I'm setting up. So I'm looking for opportunities to do that. And it doesn't mean the person's not good. I mean, everybody has opportunities, you know, but I like to hone in on those and then structure my game plan around that so that I can perform freely. Because if I don't think about that and I just say, you know, don't go for it, just, uh, just go out there and fight and see what comes to you, I'm going to be thinking about it all the time during the fight. It's just how I am. So in the past, I've tried to get away from it, but now I am fully embracing exactly who I am in the, inside the cage. So I'm going for it no matter what, yeah? And just a quick note. Is there a limit to how far you go back in terms of watching film? Like, yeah. are some fights just, you know what, that's too old, don't even worry about it? Oh, no, I, I watch all of it. Uh, because th there's certain like uh, intrinsic things about a person and about their style that will last no matter what throughout their career. And it's not about tendency, just like, oh, he drops his hand when he does this. It's about like, you know, like mindset, about uh, facial expressions, about how they feel, how they perform. When they win, how do they, when they're winning, I should say, how do they, uh, how do they uh, coordinate themselves? When they're losing, how do they behave? You know, like when they're facing adversity, you know, all these things make a difference and you can watch it escalate through years and actually, it's just kind of fun. <laughs> you know, it's just kind of fun to sit back and watch people fight knowing that you're gonna fight this guy. And it excites me to know that somebody's doing that for me too. You know, it makes it really good. Thank you. Thanks. Cool. Dwight, right in front. Uh, you come from one of the highest profile gyms in MMA, uh, in AKA. How does the skill level of your training partners prepare you for this fight? Oh, well, uh, this is good. <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm at uh, Alliance now, though, like uh, in San Diego. But I did train at AK for like seven years. So, you know, the, 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 that, that experience. And I train at Alliance, too, because I got Jeremy there. And I have, uh, you know, like uh, Dom and all these guys there, too. It makes a big difference. I was actually just talking about this recently. Like, when you're coming up and you're training with the best guys, you don't think you're that good because you're getting beat up every single day. <laughs> you know, every day is a bad day. So you don't realize until you go somewhere else, like uh, you, you go fight and you win. But... When you go to like, your friend's gym, you know, you visit back home and you stop at your friend's gym, like, oh, this is pretty easy. Like, you know, I haven't been training recently, but I've been doing pretty good. It's because you're always at a 10. Like, you've been at a 10 for like, you know, man, for years, and then you go on vacation and you're like at a seven, <laughs> you know what I mean? And even your seven is higher than other people's. So I think it definitely makes you a better uh, fighter having stronger training partners. And you know, at Alliance, I got Jeremy Stevens who's pushing me all the time and Miles Jury and all these guys, Dom, to keep me, like, keep me from being lazy. <laughs> Make sure I'm always on point, you know? And last one from me. Um, what does your path to victory look like against Stefan? Oh, it's a straight line, I <laughs> knock him out and then keep moving. You know, I'm trying to make it as quick as possible. <laughs> Thanks, Dwight. Uh, thank you.